hello and welcome to this tutorial and in this tutorial we are going to download some software which we are going to need in order to develop android applications so the first piece of software that we need is going to be the java jdk which stands for java developers kit or the java development kit so in order to download java jdk you simply go on to google and you type download java jdk and the first link which which is going to show up is the download link for java jdk so you simply open it and you will be presented with two options the first option would be to download the java jdk and the next one would be the netbeans now in this case we only want the java jdk so we simply click on this option now when we click on it it is going to redirect us to a new page which would contain a lot of options which are available to install java jdk depending upon the version of operating system which you are using so i am using windows 10 and my operating system is 64 bit operating system so i am going to download jdk from this link right over here now depending upon your operating system you could install one of these links so for example if you are on a mac os you could simply click on this link right over here now as you could see that there are two options for windows the first is windows x86 and this is windows x64 so the x64 actually stands for the 64-bit version and the x86 stands for the 32-bit version of windows now you want to make sure that you download this depending upon the version of windows which you are using now if you're not sure which version you are using so just simply minimize this window go on to your file explorer click on this pc then click on properties and this should give you the type of operating system which you are using so now in this case it is going to it is showing that i am using a 64 bit operating system on a 64 bit processor so as i am using a 64 bit operating system i am going to download the 64 bit version of java jdk now if you have a 32 bit version of operating system installed on your PC you make sure that you click this link right over here now before downloading this make sure that you accept the license agreement and now once you click this your download should begin now I already have a version of GDK installed on my computer and henceforth I'm not going to download it now once your download is complete you could open up this exe file which is present in your download folder and you could run it just like any other normal setup which you use so once you open this file it is going to start the installation process of java jdk and this installation process of java jdk is similar to any of the other software which we install so once you finish installing java jdk the next thing which we need to do is we need to set up environment variable now if you have no idea what an environment variable is you simply go on to this start button or the windows button open up your file explorer or if you have this pc on your desktop you could simply right click onto the this pc icon and go on properties and when once you go into the properties you have an option called advanced system settings and we we want to click this option and it is going to give us a pop-up which has all these tabs and you want to select the advanced tab from it and when you click this advanced tab you'll find a button over here which says environment variables now when you click on environment variables you could see that there are numerous variables which are created right over here so we have two temp variables and a java home variable now if you have installed java jdk for the very first time then there are chances that you don't have this java home variable with you so what you want to do is that you want to create a new java home variable so in order to do that the first thing which we need is we need the value of this which is nothing but the path where your jdk resides so if you have installed the java jdk at a certain location we need to specify that location over here so if you have no idea about the location of your java jdk you simply go on to my computer then go on your c drive then open up program files then in the program files you will get a folder named java just open it up and then in the java we have two folders the first one is the jdk and the JRE. Now the JRE stands for Java Runtime Environment and in this case as we are dealing with JDK we just open it up and as you could see this path this thing right here is nothing but the path which we want. So we simply click on this path right click on it click copy and the path is copied to the clipboard. Now once the path is copied the next thing which we want to do is we want to mention this path in the new environment variable. So we simply click on this new button right over here 
and you make sure that you have the variable name as java underscore home and make sure that all the alphabets are in capital and for the variable value we simply paste the path which we have copied from there now once you are done with this we simply click ok now in this case as i already have the variable on my environment variables tab i am not going to add it one more time so once we are done with this we are done with the installation of java jdk and we could use java jdk in order to run our applications but in order to develop applications we are going to need one more platform and that platform is called as the android studio so in the next tutorial we are going to learn how we could install android studio on our computer and the system requirements which we need to have in order to run android studio so thank you very much for watching this tutorial and i'll see you guys in the next tutorial thank you hello and welcome to this tutorial and in this tutorial we are going to learn how you could install android studio on your computer now in the previous tutorial we have learned how you could install download and install the java jdk and how to set up the environment variable within our computer so make sure that you have installed the java jdk and also you have set up the environment variable on your computer before downloading or installing the android studio so in order to install android studio we simply go on google and type download android studio and the first link which pops up is going to be the download link for android studio so we simply click on it and as you could see this is the android studio and android studio is basically the official android ide and ide stands for integrated development environment so this software right here is going to allow us to write the code for our android application and also it is going to provide us with a small emulator right like this so that we could run our android applications into it so basically before installing the android studio what i would like to recommend is you go and read the system requirements for android studio and that is because android studio is a bit slow on computers which have low ram so for example the system requirements which are specified for windows are that you should have a 2 gb ram minimum and 4 gb ram is recommended so if you have a 4 gb ram you don't need to worry but if you have a 2 gb ram it is not going to be sufficient to run android applications and that is because this android studio has an emulator built in which is going to allocate some memory to the emulator or to the virtual device so it is going to create a virtual device for us so that we could run our android applications and it needs to allocate some memory separately to it so you need at least 4 gb of ram if you want to install the android studio it works on 2 gb ram but the thing is that it takes a lot of time for the emulator to load up and you'll have to wait a lot for the app to get running on the emulator and also make sure that you have the 400 mb hard disk space and the rest of the requirements are pretty much the same so after reading the system requirements you click on this download android studio button and it is going to redirect you to this page and after reading this terms and conditions if you wish to read it go through it and then click on this button right here and simply click download android studio for windows now i am not going to download android studio and that is because i already have android studio installed on my computer so the thing is that once you have clicked this button you will get your download will start right over here and once the download is completed you simply need to go to your download folder and run this installation file which is androidstudio.exe and once you run it you will be guided through the installation process of android studio and make sure that you have the internet connection while you are installing the android studio and that is because the setup of android studio is going to download some of the packages for android development so make sure that you don't disconnect your internet connection in between the installation process and also i would like to mention that it takes a while for android studio to completely install on your computer and that is because as i mentioned earlier it is going to install some package download some packages from the internet onto your computer and then it is going to install it so it totally depends upon your internet connection speed so if you have a good speed it is going to ins install a bit faster as compared to if you are having a slow internet connection so once you have installed the android studio we'll be able to develop our own android apps so in the next tutorial we are going to create a basic simple android application which is going to display some text onto our computer so that's it for this tutorial and thank you very much for watching this tutorial and i'll see you guys in the next tutorial thank you
Hello and welcome to this tutorial and in this tutorial we are going to learn how you could set up your own Android project. So basically we are going to write a simple Android application in order to display something onto our emulator but the thing is that you initially need to set up your project so that you could write some code into it. So once you have finished downloading the Android studio you just simply go on to the search bar and you simply type in Android studio and the app should pop up. You simply click on this icon and the Android Studio should start. So once you're done opening up the Android Studio, if you have installed Android Studio for the very first time, you might get a different window which allows you to create a new project. But if you run it for the second time, you will get this kind of layout. And now in order to create a new project in Android Studio, you simply go on file, go to new and click on new project. And this should create a new project for us. So we need to name the project by some name. So let's name the application as let's say my application now once you have typed the application name the next thing which you want to fill up is the company domain name now in this case you want to mention the domain name of your website which you are going to use but in this case as we don't have any domains uh, we could type in anything and the main purpose of this domain is nothing but it is used in order to uniquely identify your app in the play store so for example if you have multiple applications which are named my applications then the two applications would be distinguished based upon the company domain name. So let's say we name it as application.example.com. So once we are done with this, we click next and it is going to show us the minimum SDK or the API level over here. Now this API level is basically the different versions of Android which we have. So the first version of Android is the Android Cupcake and Android 1.0. So basically you want to select the most suitable version for which you want to develop apps. So if you want to develop Android applications for ice cream sandwich, so you could use ice cream sandwich. But the thing is that you want to choose this in such a way that most of the devices should be able to run your application. So if we click the Android ice cream sandwich version, so this app will run on approximately 96% of the devices. So we are good to go. And these options right here are for the other Android devices such as the wearable, the TV, the Android Auto and the Google Glasses. So as in this case, we are going to be developing applications just for mobile phones. We are going to stick with the phone and tablet. And once we have selected the suitable option, just simply click on next. And the next thing which we want to do is we want to select an activity. So the activity is so activity is basically nothing but the initial screen on which we want to write some text or which we want to display something. So basically you could choose no activity at all or you could choose from the following activities right over here. So in this case we are going to choose a blank activity. So we simply click on it and click next and you want to name your activity so in this case the default activity name is the main activity so we are going to leave it like that now finally we click the finish button and it is going to load up the components of the project for us so basically we are done creating a project and we'll, we could see our project right over here in the project explorer bar or the project explorer tab so as you could see it is building up the project for us and right over here you could see the project explorer bar which contains the different types of files which are contained in our app folder and also you need to make sure that you keep an eye on this progress bar which will show you the progress of building the project and once this is complete you could start editing your project so as you could see our project has completely loaded in the android studio here you could see our app which contains these manifest folder which contains the android manifest which contains the xml and we also have our java folder in which we want we could write the java code and then we finally have our resources folder in which we could have our things like the images and other media so that's it for this tutorial and in this tutorial we have learned how you could set up your own android project so that we could write some code into it so in the next tutorial we'll be writing some code or rather we'll be executing this screen right here onto an emulator so we'll basically learn how to run the emulator and how to check the output of your code so thank you very much for watching and and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Thank you. Hello and welcome to this tutorial and in this tutorial we'll be finally running our own Android application onto the emulator. But before we begin with the tutorial or before we just go ahead and run the app on the emulator the first thing which we need to remember is that uh, we need to check some things before we directly jump into running the code onto the emulator. So the first thing which we need to verify is that if our Android SDK and JDK are present in the correct location. 
So you need to make sure that you have specified a proper path for the Android SDK and the Java JDK. So in order to check that you simply go on file and click on project structure. So this window is going to pop up which is going to display the locations of the Android SDK as well as the JDK. So as my Android SDK is present in the following location, so I make sure that your path is also the same. Uh, the thing is that you need to specify the location of the SDK where the SDK is actually present. The next thing which we want to verify is that you want to verify the uh, location of the JDK which is nothing but the uh, Java development kit. So make sure that you give a proper path in these two areas or in these two text boxes and if the proper path is not available just then just simply go on this uh, browse button and you simply select the proper path in which your JDK or SDK is present. Now once this is done we are good to go and now the next thing which I wanted to discuss with you guys is you also need to install one more package which is called as the Intel Accelerator package. Now if you have gone through the default uh, installation steps then chances are that you might have installed Intel Emulator Accelerator but the thing is that in order to make sure that you have already installed it uh, you just simply go on to this SDK manager. So this is going to pop up the SDK manager for us and the SDK manager is basically uh, it kinds of manages all the Android packages which we need in order to run our Android application. So for example the Android Studio is nothing but the environment which we are going to use in order to write Android code but the thing is that we are going to need a lot of packages and a lot of inbuilt software for building an application. So this SDK manager is going to manage every everything and all the things for us so that we don't need to worry about it and we could concentrate on coding. So now once this is opened up you simply go on this SDK tools and as you could see it is going to display us a lot of packages which are installed and which are not installed. Now we don't need to install all of these and that is because your ID is going to be flooded with packages and the thing is that we are only going to install the one which we require. So this is the package which I am talking about the Intel x86 emulator accelerator which is also called as HAXM installer which we need to install. Now if this is checked in your uh, SDK tools then that means that you have successfully installed it but if you find that this, this thing right here is unchecked then you simply check it like this and click on OK and it is going to download the Intel x86 emulator accelerator onto your computer. But there is one more issue or one more thing with this package is that this package is not going to work unless and until the hardware acceleration is enabled on your computer. Now in order to check if hardware acceleration is enabled on your computer you'll need to go into your BIOS settings. If you don't know how to enter into BIOS uh, simply when you boot up your computer you'll get an option like if you press escape you are going to enter into the BIOS and inside the BIOS we have multiple settings which we could adjust so for example in this case we want to enable the hardware acceleration so we simply go into the BIOS during our boot and inside that we have an option which is called as enable hardware acceleration and we have the option to either enable or disable it. So in this case we want to make sure that that option is enabled so that we could use the Intel emulator accelerator into our Android studio application. Now it is not a compulsion to install this package but the thing is that if you don't have this package installed then your emulator is going to run a bit slow. So if you install it it's a good thing and it, it is going to make your emulator much faster so that you could execute your Android applications much more smoothly and in a good manner. So make sure that you have this package installed on your computer. Now once this is installed we click OK and the next thing which I wanted to discuss is about this phone. So basically uh, it is going to give us a view in which we have our main activity screen which is this and it is also going to show the phone over here. But the thing is that if your screen is small then the space on your screen is not sufficient to just fit this activity as well as the phone. So if you wanted to get rid of this phone you simply click on this settings button and just uncheck this option which, say, which says include device frames. Now when you click it it is going to remove the phone and you'll be only left with the screen. So this is our main screen where we have the hello world already written for us and we have a message button right over here. So this is basically our application and when we set up our own project this is automatically going to get set up by the Android Studio IDE and we don't need to write anything. 
so for the sake of this tutorial what we are going to do is we are going to simply run this and if we are able to run this that means we have successfully installed all the required packages and if we get an error while running this application onto the emulator that means we have left something in the installation process so now let's go ahead and just simply run our application now in order to run our application you need to go into the android avd manager so if you see a button right here this is nothing but your avd manager which stands for android virtual device manager and it is going to manage the virtual devices for us now if you click on it you could see there are two devices the main device is the nexus 5 and i have created a copy of nexus 5 as a clone of this and that is because i wanted to keep this as original and i just wanted to make sure that i don't mess up the settings within this so i have created a copy of this and we are going to run our applications on this so now if you want to run your application you could see there is a button which looks like a play button you simply go on it and click on it and it is going to ask you on which device you need to run now in this case we are going to run it on the copy of nexus 5 so i simply select this option then i click ok and our emulator is going to start in the background now if you are starting it for a very first time then chances are it is going to take a lot of time for the emulator to load up and that is because the emulator is going to emulate uh, just running a brand new phone so it is going to emulate each and every hardware part within your phone so for that purpose it requires a little bit of time so if you are running it for the first time don't worry it is going to take a while so you'll need to have a bit of patience but when you run it for the second time it is going to load up much faster so as you could see we have our emulator running which shows us the basic nexus phone and it is going to boot up for us now the time taken by this phone to boot up also depends on your processor as well as the memory or the ram which you are using and it is going to load up the application for us now here is our application which says my application and hello world right on the emulator so that's how you use the android emulator in order to run the basic android application so we have successfully launched our application onto the emulator and that means that we have set up everything in a correct manner and we have completed the installation process and we have already installed the necessary packages which we want for our app to run perfectly so thank you very much for watching and i'll see you guys in the next tutorial Thank you. Hello and welcome to this tutorial and in this tutorial we are going to go through the interface of the Android Studio IDE. So basically in this tutorial we are not going to write any code we are just going to go through what things are used for what purpose. So as you could see we have our main screen over here on which we could edit our Android application. So let me just resize it. And as you could see if you want to browse through our project then we have our project right over here. So this is the project explorer bar or the project explorer tab. So if you want to see what's included in our project, we simply click on this arrow and it is going to display the other folders, which is the manifest. Now, if you open up the manifest, then it is going to contain the manifest Android manifest.xml file, which is which contains the Android manifest. And if we click on Java, then it is going to contain the Java code, which we are going to write in order to run our applications. Now if you go here we will find the resources folder and the resources folder is basically used in order to store the resources which are required for our, our Android application. So for example this drawable folder right here is going to contain the images which we want to store in our Android application. So for example if you want to include some images into your Android application we simply load them up in the drawable folder. Now we have one more folder which is called as the layout and this is going to have two files currently so the first file is the activity main.xml which is nothing but the xml file which is going to define the structure of your or the layout of your application now we are going to discuss something about the values folder so the values folder is basically going to contain the values which we are going to store in our android application now one more thing which i wanted to explain is that uh, there are two ways in which you could edit your application or you could program your application so for example if you want to design the layout there is this layout window present right over here which contains various things like the frame layout the linear layout or it contains some widgets like the plain text view the medium text it also contains the radio, radio buttons check boxes so one thing which you could do is that you could simply just drag and drop these things onto your application 
so this is the simplest approach which you could follow and the next approach is by just using the text so for example you could just enter your xml right over here so instead of just dragging and drop, dropping buttons and text boxes you could just write the code for them into here so there are two ways in order to design your layout so the first uh, first method is nothing but you just drag and drop things onto your application and it is automatically going to modify the code for you and the next approach is by just going into this text and writing the code out for the things like uh, radio buttons and buttons so it depends upon you which approach you want to follow so this drag and drop approach is much easier but the thing is that if we follow this uh, code approach then it would be much more beneficial for you to understand the xml code which is contained uh, which is included in the content mail dot xml file so a few more things which you want to remember is that we have the zoom out and zoom in button so for example if you if the text on your screen is appearing a bit small then you could just zoom in and you could just edit it out according to your preference and you could also zoom out and you could see the entire screen and also as i've explained in the earlier tutorial that if you want to include a device frame so for example in some applications uh, you need to develop and you need to have the frame as well then you simply click on it and it is going to show you the application on a phone and if you just click on it again it is going to remove the device frame for you so that you could see the screen more clearly so it depends upon your preference whichever you want to use if you want to use for application uh, wherein you have to include the phone frame so as to make sure how your application looks on a phone so you simply click on the include frame button or for the sake of convenience if you don't want it you could just remove it as and when you want so some more important things which I need to cover is that this button right here is used for running your application onto the emulator. So if you click it, your application is going to load up in the emulator. And this button right here is for the project structure which is going to basically include the SDK and JDK paths. So if you want to reconfigure this path for some purpose, you could click on this button directly. Then we have the AVD manager in which you could create your own Android virtual device. So we are going to go through this AVD manager in the upcoming tutorials and we are going to learn how you could create your own virtual device and the main purpose of using this is that if you want to test your test out your applications on multiple devices then you could just simply use any of the devices which is included in this and you could test out how your application works on that particular device so it basically allows you to test your application on as many devices as you want uh, so that your application runs on maximum number of devices so that was a button for the AVD manager then we have the SDK manager so the SDK manager is going to show you the packages which are installed and which are not installed so for some applications if you needed some tools then you could just go ahead and click the application package which you want to install and just simply click on ok and that is going to install some packages for you now one of the most important thing about your Android application is that you have two main things or the two major things in your Android app the first is your layout which is nothing but the design which uh, which is just like the front end or the front facing things of your Android application that is nothing but the text box the screen the activity and all those things and then if you want to write the logic for your Android application then we move on to this main activity dot Java file so if you click on it you could see the Java code which we have right over here so this basically has the code which we are going to write so you could switch in between these two things so if you want to go on to the content main dot xml you could click on this and in order to go to the main activity you click on this button right here so it allows you to switch between the two as and when you require so before jumping right into the code these are the few basic things which we need to cover so as to make our android learning experience much more better and that is because we need to understand these things before starting with the code and that is because we are going to need these things when we start writing our code so in this tutorial we have learnt about the interface of the android ide or the android studio ide and we have gone through the various things like the project tab and this tab which contains some things which you could directly drag and drop we have also learned that we could design android applications in two ways that is we could design the layout of the application in two ways the first is we could just drag things and drop or drop them directly onto the screen and another way is we could just simply go ahead and write the code into the xml so thank you very much for watching this tutorial and i'll see you guys in the next tutorial thank you hello and welcome to this tutorial and in this tutorial we are going to learn about some android studio tips and how they could be useful for you when we start writing code so in the previous tutorial we have gone through the interface of the android studio ide and in this tutorial we are going to discuss some tips which are going to prove helpful for you 
so that you could program more efficiently so the first thing which i need to discuss with you is that there are a number of shortcut keys available for you so as to use the android studio id so if you want to know all the shortcuts for this you could simply go on help and you could click on default key map preferences so if you click on it you are going to get a list of all the possible shortcut keys which we are going to require to use the android studio id more efficiently so what i recommend is that you just simply print out this thing and you could just use them when you are developing the android applications now in these tutorials i'm not going to be using this shortcut keys and that is because if i'll be using the shortcut keys then it would be difficult for you to recognize what i've done so this key map preferences are usually available in a pdf format so you could easily print them out and you could just have the copy all the times with you so as to increase your productivity and efficiency while writing the code so make sure that you print it out and always have a copy with you now one more thing which i wanted to mention is that you could also change the theme for your android studio application so for example if you